In this video, we're going to be learning about the properties of circles. We'll be learning how to label parts of the circles, so to be able to name the different parts of them, which will include learning about the radius, the, the diameter and the circumference. Um, and we'll learn rules such as the diameter is twice the radius. In this activity, we are going to first of all learn about the parts of a circle. In year six, there are three parts of a circle that you need to be able to identify and name. Next, we're going to look at how you would find the diameter of a circle and then how to find the radius of a circle. And then we're going to finish off with some word problems. So the first thing you could do is to print off the circles a quick guide. This will be in the resources section on your app and it is very useful and um, really important that you try and study it. This is not something that you'll just learn in year six and then not come across again. This will carry on all the way up to your GCSEs. So it's, it's gonna give you a really good foundation for understanding circles. So let's look at the first part of this worksheet in detail. Here we learn about three main parts of a circle, the radius, the diameter, and the circumference. We will learn what each of these three parts are and also how they link to one another. So if we were to know what one of these things were, we should be able to use that clue to find out what the other things are. Okay, let's start with the radius. The radius of a circle is basically the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. So if you took the center of the circle and you drew a straight line to any point on the edge, it would always measure the same distance and that's called the radius. If you look across at the diameter, you'll see that the diameter is actually a line that cuts the circle in half. That line will travel through the center of the circle as well. If you compare it to the radius, you'll see that it's actually double the radius and the radius is double, is half, sorry, the diameter. So the radius travels from the center to the edge. The diameter travels from one edge to the other edge, but through the middle, through the center of the circle. It will cut the circle in half. Now, in this instance, in this example, it's cutting it across um, horizontally. However, it's worth noting that that line could go through diagonally, it could go from top to bottom, it doesn't have to be across the middle horizontally like that. If it passes from one edge to the other through the centre, then it is the diameter. The circumference of a circle is basically the perimeter of the circle. It's the distance all the way around the edge. So if you started at one point on the edge and you followed it all the way round till you got back to your starting point, that would be your circumference. In our first activity, we're going to be finding the diameter of each circle using the clues given. If you feel confident at being able to do this already, then pause the video or skip this section and go ahead on your own. However, if you'd like a bit of help, I'm going to go through an example on your screen now. Remember to use your help box on the side. It's given you the formulas there so you don't have to remember them. Okay, we're going to start with a circle which has one part labelled. The first thing is to think about what clue do we have? What part of the circle have we got labelled? You can notice that it runs from the centre to the edge. It does not cut the circle completely in half. It doesn't run from one edge to the other. So we have the radius. So we could write down that the radius is 10 centimetres. It's always important when you're looking at any kind of problem that you think about what you do know. What clues do you have? In this instance, we only have one clue, but we know that it's the radius and that it's 10 centimetres. So looking at your formula, how does the radius link to the diameter? You can see that the radius is half of the diameter and that the diameter is two times the radius. So we can actually just substitute that 10 centimetres in for R in your formula box. So where it said before, D equals 2R, we can put D equals 2. We're going to put a multiplication sign in now because we're not using a letter and a number. 
So 2 times 10 is 20. So the diameter is 20 centimetres. So this time I need to find the radius and my circle has been labelled with a line that's cutting it in half, which says eight centimetres. So what is the name of that line? It is running from one edge to the other and it's going through the centre. It's cutting the circle completely in half. This line is our diameter. So if I know that my diameter is eight centimetres, how can I use this to find my radius? Well, my radius is half of my diameter because my diameter is double my radius. So I just need to do eight divided by two to get my radius, which is four centimetres. For the final part of this activity, you have three word problems. I'm going to help you to get started with the first two. If you would like to have a go at this by yourself without help, then please have a go first and then you can always check back with the video to see how you got on. Or you might want to stay tuned and get a little bit of help. Please pause at any time that you feel ready to do it by yourself. A team of ducks swims to the edge of a circular pond from the centre. It's four metres from one edge to the other. How far did the ducks swim? So if we highlight our important information, they swim to the edge of a circle from the centre. And it's four metres from one edge to the other. So what part of the circle do we have? If we have swum from the middle of a circular pond from the centre, what part is that? So even though this picture isn't a perfect circle on the side, they're swimming from the centre to the edge. What part of the circle is that? And the information we've got is that it is four metres from one edge all the way through. Now that's not a straight line, but to give you an idea, from one edge to the other, it's four metres. So what part of the circle is that? So which clue have we got? Is four metres your diameter or is four metres your radius? And is the question asking you for the radius or for the diameter? So for the ducks, they swam this purple line from the centre to the edge. Is that the radius or is that the diameter? So for this question, you need to be thinking about whether the clue is the diameter or radius and whether the question is asking you for the diameter or radius. So I'm going to give you the answer for that now. So the clue we've got, one edge to the other, is your diameter. The diameter is four metres. And the question is asking you for the radius from the centre to the edge. So can you use the diameter of four metres to give you your answer of the radius. I'm gonna let you do the last bit yourself. If you're still not sure at this point, please go back and watch from the beginning of the video to revise what diameter and radius are and how they link to one another. So let's look at the next question. A flag is put into the center of a circular circus tent. The flag is 2.75 meters from the edge. How big is the tent's diameter? So here you're actually told what you need to find. You need to find the diameter, okay? So you, you are finding the diameter. What clue do we have? Well, we've got that the flag is 2.75 meters, sorry, from the edge. So if we had our circle, it's 2.75 meters from the edge and we know that it's in the centre because it says in our word problem it's put in the centre. So we know what the radius is. We know that the radius is 2.75 metres because the clues are telling us that it's the centre of a circle and it, that's it's 2.75 away from the edge. Let me change that to 2.75, only written 2.7 in.
how we're going to use the radius to help us find out what the diameter is. And the final question, question three, I will let you do that by yourself. You're identifying parts of the circle here. So you just need to tick the statement which you think is correct. OK, good luck with the rest of your questions. So well done. I hope you've learned something new and hopefully you now understand how the radius, diameter and circumference all link together and how when we have clues about one of those things, we can use that to find what the other things are. So when you're feeling really confident, print off the past SATS questions and have a look at the different way this kind of math skill might be presented. Good luck.